Recinrecs are a great tool for modeling devil's facts because they can be used to help students see that they can find benchmarks of 5 and 10 to figure out the solution to a devil's fact. So one example might be 7 plus 7. Of course, when students first start using the Recinrec, they might count all of the beads. The next step would be they would go 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. They might count on. What you want to do is encourage students to start finding those benchmarks of 5 and 10. So if students aren't seeing it, you might point out to them here, we've got 5 and 5, and together that makes 10. So 7 plus 7 is really a 5 and a 5 and a 2 and a 2. 5 and 5 is 10, 2 and 2 is 4, put them together and you get 14. Same thing would work for a doubles fact, any doubles fact greater than 5. So if you did 9 plus 9, again you'll see students use a couple different strategies, counting all, counting on, and the more you model it, the more you'll see students go, hey, I see a 5 and a 5, which makes 10, and a 4 and a 4, which makes 8, so 9 and 9 is 18. One of the best parts of the Rec and Rec is that students can use it in more than one way. So some students might move the beads a little differently. If you ask them to show 9 plus 9, some students will start with 9 and go, okay, I'm going to put in the 1 here, and I need to put an 8 more on the bottom to make 9, and they'll see a group of 10 and 8 more. 9 and 9 is 18. Okay, that similar strategy could be modeled with 8 plus 8. So the student might start by 8, and instead of putting 8 at the bottom, they might go, I'm going to use these 2, and I know I've used 2, I need 6 more to make 8. Now I've got my group of 10 here, and 6 makes 16, so 8 and 8 is 16. Because Rec and Rex rely so heavily on finding groups of 5 and 10, they connect really well to one of the easiest and most available math manipulatives, hands. So of course when students first start adding, they're going to count on their fingers. And that's a really important stage that they need to go through, but we don't want them to get stuck there. We want to move them into using more efficient strategies. And one way to do that is by helping them see the groups of 5. So if you were working on a fact like 6 plus 6, and you've asked the students to share how they solved it, and maybe one student said, well, I moved 6 beads on the top and 6 beads on the bottom, and I saw that 5 red beads and 5 red beads made 10, and 1 white bead and 1 white bead made 2, so 10 and 2 is 12, I know 6 plus 6 is 12. That's a great opportunity to now connect it to their hands. So you could invite a student to show six on their fingers, and it doesn't matter if they do it this way or this way, so, and have them pretend that they're looking in a mirror. Or if you have an available mirror, you could put it up for them and say, okay, if you're looking in a mirror, how many fingers would be on this side? Well, we would see five real fingers and five mirror image fingers, so that makes 10. And on this side, we would see one real thumb and one mirror image thumb, and that makes two. 10 and 2 makes 12. And then you could go on to ask the students, how is that the same as what we saw on the Rec and Rec? And you might want to repeat with another example. So you could try that again with 8 plus 8, have students do it on the Rec and Rec. You might talk a little bit about how you see that 5 and 5 is 10, 3 and 3 is 6. Put them together, you get 16. Invite students to hold up 8 fingers. Again, imagine you're looking in a mirror, so on this side I've got five real fingers and five mirror image fingers, so that makes ten. And over here I've got three real fingers and three mirror image fingers, so that makes six. We need to put them together. Ten and six make sixteen, so eight plus eight is sixteen. When you are modeling and exploring strategies on the Rec and Rec, it can be helpful to show the abstract or numeric representation, especially for students that are ready for that next level. That's partly why the Rec and Rec is such a great tool, because it's concrete for the students that need it, but can easily be moved into more abstract representations. So if you were to work on 6 plus 6, and students have had a chance to figure it out either using that hand method, 
or seeing the doubles on a wreck and wreck, you might want to start showing some recording. So of course you would start with the fact you're working on, which is six plus six. Now there are lots of different ways to show this. I'm just going to show you one. Often if you ask students to represent their thinking, you'll see a whole bunch of really creative, really intuitive ways of showing the math. So if we're looking at six plus six and you've talked about what it looks like on the wreck and wreck and the students know it's five red beads and one white bead, you might write a simple number bond. I like to use rectangles because they're easy for students to draw and they're fairly easy for students to figure out. So again, we know that six is comprised of five red beads and one white bead. Then we would talk about what does double mean? Well, it means show the same number again or show every part twice. So we know if we have five red beads on the top and one red bead on the top as well, we need to have five red on the bottom and one red on the bottom. So you could represent that in numbers as five plus five, and the total of that is 10, and one plus one, and the total is two. And then of course you would talk to students, what do we need to do now? We need to put all of our pieces back together. So 10 plus two makes 12, which gives us the solution to our original question, six plus six equals 12. You don't want to do this in isolation. This would be done alongside a teacher model or as students are explaining, you could be recording it numerically. It's not always important for students to record their rec and rec work in a numeric format. The idea is for them to really build those visualizations. You want those visualizations to stick in their head so they can carry them with them even when they don't have an actual rec and rec. So I wouldn't say to students that you have to record it in numbers. I would leave it as a differentiation option for you can, those students that are maybe getting a little restless with showing the fact on their rec and rec, ask them to show it to you a different way. It might be pictures or it might be numbers.